Hello, everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart. How is everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. When you come on, um, let me know if this is your first time and let me know where you're watching from. We are painting um, this really fun Bonjour Paris um, painting tonight of the Eiffel Tower. I don't, I'm having trouble with my phone here. There I am, okay. Because I like to be able to see comments. I can't always see them here. So I'm gonna look there, um, but here we are. So I have my paints. And like I said, I always, um, I give you suggested paint colors. And we are doing this tonight in pinks and teals and purples. But when it comes time, if you wanted to paint it again, um, you and your, use your own color palette. Do it in blacks and grays, do it in greens. Um, it's up to you, your art, your way. So um, I have a piece of graphite paper. I did post today if you wanted to base coat your um, surface first, and then when it dried, you can go on and trace your, uh, put your traceable, trace your traceable um, after that. I usually am heavy handed, so I am just going to go in and do mine without base coating it. Um, so, because I really feel like, and I could be wrong, it happens. Um, I really feel like at the end, um, even after I base coat, I will be able to see my lines. I don't like how it's lining up on this page. That's weird. Let's go down this way. Um, so anyway, I am going to trace mine on, and I'll show you guys how I do that. I do that with um, this graphite paper. I lay it down. I'll show you guys. So I have my surface, and this is 9 by 12 Bristol board. This is what I use for a lot of my paintings. This happens to be... Um, Actually, I'm using 11 by 14. This is 9 by 12 Bristol board. Is that why this doesn't fit? Because I picked out the wrong one? Yeah, so not a 11 by 14. I'm going to use 9 by 12. So this is 9 by 12 Bristol board. I use it um, for a lot of my paintings. And when I do these tutorials, it's very thick. Um, depending on you, you can actually paint on the other side if you wanted to. These pads are um, rather inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon, and they are great for practicing. So now that I realize what the problem was with my printable, I mean with my traceable, now we will be able to do what I need to do. So let me line this up. Sometimes I cut it out, but I'm just going to flip it over the top like that. Then I'm going to slip my graphite paper up underneath. this oh, came out and I will get started tracing and we can chit chat um, I don't know how many of you guys follow me on my business page Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art as well as here but I just came back oh goodness I put it upside down ah, I'm batting what is it batting 500 I don't know batting a thousand I don't know baseball um, So, I just got back from a retreat, a painting retreat. It was awesome. I met so many. There we go. All right, enough fuss. I met so many um, creatives. So, I am not tracing over everything. I'm not going to trace over all the hash lines. I give these tracers. It is up to you how much detail you want to add or not add. It's up to you if you want to use a ruler for these straight lines. There are occasions when it depends on what I'm painting that I will, in fact, use a ruler. Tonight is not one of them. Um, and I am not going in and adding all the details of the hash lines and where the highlights are going to go and where the um, extra little details are going to go. I'm just doing the basic outline of our Eiffel Tower, our flowers, and our lamp. And this tracer does not have, oh yes it does, okay, down here, the arch. 
Okay, and I printed out our picture. And for the flowers, I'm just going to do the outside. And I say it's replacement. So we know where we're gonna put our flowers. And our leaves. A little um, mound of grass. And then the lamp post. And the lamp post is basically a U with kind of an N on top, and in between is a little hat and another U. And I think that is it. Yes. So I believe I will be able to see my tracer. I toss everything on the floor and clean up when I'm done. Um, let me see. Comments. Is it? Yes. Oh, let's turn off the sound. Okay. So, hey Angie, who else? Um, and we have Terry, hello Terry. Hi Shauna, Shauna, it's nice to see you. You don't know it, Shauna, well you probably know it now, but whenever I see your name, I sing it. Shauna! So, okay, let's get started. I am going to, I, so you guys, let me just tell you something. When I paint this the first time, and before I get ready to paint with you guys, I give myself a list. This is my like scrappy instruction list because I don't want to miss any steps for y'all. So I have a step list that I follow so I don't forget anything and leave stuff out, okay? So if this is your first time painting with me, let me know. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to see the comments on my computer, so hopefully, I will be able to see them up here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I put the graphite paper on the wrong side. Good thing I caught it before I started tracing it. That would have been a problem. So I am putting out pink. You can add a little white to your pink. I'm not going to. I'm going to add a little white over the pink um, if I need to. I'm not going to fret about that because our paper's white. So we'll see if we need to add some strokes. We're not going for full coverage here, okay? Because if you can see from the sample, we don't need full coverage. We went back and added some white to it. I am, as you can see, painting on a diagonal. You know why? No reason, just cause. And as you can see, I can in fact see my lines because I am heavy handed. And I am leaving it streaky. I'm leaving it streaky on purpose. If you don't wanna leave your streaky, if you didn't leave your streaky, I will show you how we're going to go back and add the white after. If you've already base coated yours and then wanted to trace it on afterwards, um, that's fine. I will show you how we go in and add some white after. But I am happy with the coverage I'm getting with this pink paint and that I am not giving full coverage. I'm actually going to skip my flowers because we don't need pink behind there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't need pink totally behind my flowers. Oh, let me scooch you guys up a little bit. Sorry. So if this is your first time visiting, if this is your first time painting with me, let me know. So Terry, you ordered graphite paper? I've probably had this same graphite paper um, for over 10 years. I've used it for art kits. I've used it obviously for my own painting. Um, I've used it with my kids. It's like you can't I think maybe it, it was five sheets and maybe now I'm down to four sheets. It, you can't like kill it. So there we have our um, base coat and you can see, right? You can see that I can still see my lines in there. So we're not gonna worry about that, okay? So if you have already base coated yours, 
and you did it solid, we will add some, sorry, click, click, click. We're just gonna take, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up some white, not a lot. I'm gonna stroke it off and I'm just gonna add some wisps of white across the corners. I'm offloading the brush. Let's get rid of that. that. I'm offloading a little bit of the white so it's not too heavy. And then I'm going back in. And this time, I'm still on a diagonal. And I'm just almost like a dry brush effect. And I'm not going to add too much more because I had a lot of white already that I didn't um, make full coverage. Okay? So there we go. So now I'm going to put out, oh, I have some magenta. I think I had a magenta on my list. Cardinal magenta. Okay. So I like this painting for a couple of reasons. I didn't say thing. Very, yeah, it's very expensive. So I like this painting for several reasons. One, it's really pretty and vibrant. And it is very, um, like I said, you can change the palette on this and it would be just as pretty if you wanted to do it in greens. Sorry, you guys. If you guys wanted to do it in greens or blues or. Um, black and grays it would be really cool it's a very versatile painting and the second reason I like this painting it doesn't take a lot of colors I have two greens a pink a purple a white and black and you always need white and black so that doesn't even really count so other than that it's like what five other colors so I love that I like to keep it simple for you guys so I have rinsed my brush but I'm not gonna rinse it out I'm okay you know I always squeeze it in here right and I'm gonna start with some of this magenta and I'm just gonna go in and now I like to use this is about a three-quarter inch brush okay and I'm going to use this you can use a liner brush but I'm going to show you guys how you want to use this brush on the chisel edge so if you have a one inch brush like this one second because once again you guys I have forgotten to start my time-lapse there we go okay so hopefully you have a brush that does not look like this okay that's scary so you want any I could load this with paint and I would get it fairly thin but these bristles will no longer stay together I use this brush for backgrounds, um, dry brushing, whatever. So I'm using this better brush that when you put the paint in and you pull out paint, you want to get paint right into the bristles on both sides of the brush. Okay. And then you want a nice chisel edge. Like I said, you could use a liner brush for this, but I don't want to be using too many brushes and if you stand up on the chisel edge and don't apply too much pressure to your brush, you'll be able to get the look that you want. Like that. Okay? So now we've defined our space for our Eiffel Tower. Okay, now I'm gonna put out my teal and I'm going to, I want my teal to be a little bit, um, actually it's not teal, it's patina or turquoise. Teal is more green, we don't wanna use more green. So I'm gonna mix some of this with white because we want our Eiffel Tower to be a little bit more pale and that's one way we cut down on the colors that we're using. So if we used our patina or a turquoise color full strength, then we'd need a, another blue. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pick up some of this white and mix it into this. And so this way 
we have more of a pastel look for the blue that we're using. And you can mix it into whatever color or darkness that you want. And then later on, when we go back and add highlights with our teal, or our turquoise rather, we'll have the exact color. It'll be the color that came out of the bottle and it will contrast because we already lightened this one up. I don't know, does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So I'm going in and my brush, if you put a little pressure on your brush, your brush is the exact, and you're using a three quarter inch or one inch brush, your brush is the exact width of the top parts of the Eiffel Tower. It gets thicker as we go down. And this is another reason why we add the magenta first. And then we went in. It helps to help our pink. I bounce around a lot, but I bounce around. I don't bounce around because I'm crazy. I bounce around. There's a method to my madness. I bounce around so it gives other sections of our painting time to dry. Because if I didn't bounce around and do the magenta, this pink background would have been too wet to start painting our Eiffel Tower in, which is fine. So when you're painting it on your own, you can take a break, you can, you know, not worry about your background. You can let it dry naturally or with the hair dryer or something. But for these tutorials, um, I like to keep it moving. And you guys know I record these, um, but they stay in the group. So you will have access to this recording. It stays, the Facebook Live stays live. I mean, stays recorded, it stays in this free group. And actually, I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you go up to the top, let me talk for one second. If you go up to the top of the free page, it says guides. And I have made a guide for each of the lives that we have done so far, starting all the way back from, I think it was January. Oh yeah, it was when we did the Happy Snowman. The Happy Snowman was first in January, then we did a Valentine's one. So they are all in there and they are in guides and they include the supply list and the tracer and the video. So if you, if there was something that you wanted to go back and watch, paint again, um, paint with your friends, it's all in there. All I ask is that these are for personal use only. Um, you can't use any of my designs in this free group to charge or have uh, or monetize or anything. These are solely in there for um, your guys' use to learn how to paint and have fun painting because you guys know how much I love painting. Okay? So, please be respectful. Some of these designs, um, they're not always mine and I get them from other people who are strict about their rules. I'm allowed to use them. Um, but other people are not allowed to monetize from them. So I just wanna, want to be clear about that, but they are in there for your painting enjoyment. And I've said in the past, you guys have a question, if you're painting something that we've done weeks ago, months ago, whatever, and you need some information, just message me. I'd be happy to help you, okay? So, now we have the, um, everything, on the top part, base coated, I'm rinsing out my brush and my water here, and I'm gonna squeeze it dry. So, do we, do, 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 nope, we're good, okay. All right, I'm gonna put out a little bit of the purple. Oh, so, you guys, I learned something this week. You guys aren't kids, but. I usually say put out like a quarter because if you tap it down, 
that's like a quarter of paint. So I learned something. So I was at this conference this weekend. Now we're going to base coat our flowers. Um, I was at a painting conference this week. It was so much fun. I met so many creatives. It was just, you know, it's so nice to be with people who share the same passion that you share um, and sharing ideas and techniques. We made, I'll post them in here. I want to take some nice pictures of them. We did like six amazing, amazing projects. The conference was sponsored by Diverse Woodworking and Diverse Woodworking is a privately owned company that a gentleman started about 10 years ago in Indiana. And he cuts wood cutouts for people like me and people like you. I have, an, I have a wholesale account because I have a business, but um, you can buy retail. He has the cutest shapes and so many different designs. So when you guys have seen me paint, I don't know if there's something behind me. Oh, the butterfly, the butterfly over that shoulder. That's from him. Um, when I did the sunflower wall uh, door hanger, that was from him. I believe he said uh, during the conference he has over 9,000 shapes and designs. Holy moly. But anyway, I was talking about quarters. So one woman I met there, went to my brush, she works with a lot of children. And I do a lot of kids. I do art kits for kids. I do kids' birthday parties. Um, I love, love painting with children. But um, so this woman said that she tells her children, her kids' students, when they put out their paint, if they should put out the paint, should it be a regular M&M or a peanut M&M? And I thought that was brilliant. So, you know, who doesn't think about candy and especially kids, right? So I'm like, oh, I tell my painters to put out like a quarter size. And she's like, no, it depends on what she's painting and what they need. She tells them either an M&M amount or a peanut M&M amount. Because I guess you guys have learned this from painting with me. You don't really need as much paint as you think you do most of the time. So I thought that was rather funny, but I learned a lot of clever stuff. I can't wait. I'm going to post this weekend. I'm going to take pictures of my projects and um, I'll post them in here and on my business page. This is really cute. We did some stencil stuff. I did resin for the first time. I'm usually, well, I'm still scared of resin, but I'm usually scared of resin. So it was nice to be able to be walked through it with somebody who does it and does, she does resin parties actually. I don't know that I would do resin parties, but it was so cool, so I can't wait to show you guys what that was all about. I might switch to a smaller brush for my leaves. Number 10, okay. So I am just, um, now I do leaves many, many different ways. For this particular project, I am just going to do them the easy way, where I'm just going to draw in the shape of the leaf in the light green and then fill it in with the light green okay I do um, different kinds of leaves you guys know I do one stroke leaves which talking about one stroke leaves you guys if you're interested um, I'm putting together a basic beginner one stroke course it will be um, Three leaves, the one stroke leaf, a wiggle leaf, and a heart leaf, and three flowers. So I'll be I'm putting that together. I'll have a sign up soon, and there will be an extra bonus flower um, for the holidays if you sign up early. So that will be coming in September. And um, so stay tuned for that. I'll be working on that and putting that all together. Okay. And then we're gonna go in here while we have our green out. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the dark green and we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna add in the grassy knoll. Sorry, bad reference. So, and this is just really no rhyme or reason. I had the light green on my brush 
and I just dip the corner in the dark green and I'm going in here and this is going to be an uneven line and I'm just filling this in with our greens okay and now while my brush is still dirty I'm going to pick up all dark green and I'm going to outline my leaves with my dirty brush with dark green using the chisel edge of the brush okay so let's see what we have so far Let me turn you guys around so we did our background in pink and then I went in and I dry brushed a little bit of white. Then while we waited for that to dry a little bit, um, if you had to, if you traced it after or before, that's fine. I, I traced mine first and I was able to see through the pink. So while we waited for our background to dry, I added a little bit of magenta highlight just to accent our Eiffel Tower. Then we went in and we added white to our blue that we're using and I'm using a patina, a turquoise, yes. So we wanted it, I wanted it pale, a little pastel-y, and this way we'll go back and we'll use our patina later or our teal or our turquoise for highlights. So we base coated our Eiffel Tower, and then I picked out um, the dark purple, and I base coated the flowers and the leaves, and I did the leaves by doing the light green, and then I mixed a little dark green for the bottom, and then outlined the leaves with the dark green. Okay. And like I said, I could paint this, um, but what happens is then I'm like, oh, I missed this, or oh, I missed that. So I like to have my steps written down so when we're doing it together, I don't miss anything, and we have to wait for certain parts to dry and go back and forth and whatever. So, okay. Now we did our flowers. Actually, it would have been smart if we, no, we couldn't have done our green. We needed our flowers. So now I'm gonna pick up, now you can use, I'm using this three quarter inch brush still. You can use your liner brush, but I'm using this brush. And you see how I get the paint on it? I put the paint on one side, then I flip it over and I put the paint on the other side. We want our bristles, brushes are made to hold paint. We want our bristles to hold paint. We don't want to run out of paint. When you run out of paint, that's when you have to add more paint. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start adding in some of these purple highlights. My brush is not cooperating. There we go. Okay. And you don't have to be perfect. We're just adding lines. And now we're going to start doing the hashtags. And the way we do the hashtags is by doing X's. But then you want the next X to come off the first X. See that? So you start with an X. And then this one comes off of there. This one comes off of there. Okay? and they touch. And we're going to keep doing that. So there are X's, but you want them to touch, and this way your lines are parallel. And they don't have to go all the way to the edge. Okay? They don't have to be perfect. We're just adding in some detail and you guys know I tell you this all the time our projects go through stages right and we don't worry about it until the end at the very end we get all our details and that's when our entire project comes together right so I didn't like that one line so I just went back in and added to it I could have waited for it to dry. I could have went back over it with the teal, but I decided to. Um, I decided to just um, fill it in and make it look like it was on purpose. Okay. 
Where was I? I uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So, <clears throat> now I'm going to get out my liner brush because I like my liner brush for white. And I always dip my liner brush in water first. Let me get out of the white because this one is empty. I don't want to start banging around and stuff. So, I always dip my liner brush in water first. Dry it out, but at least it's wet. And then when we use our liner brush, we like to roll it. Okay? And this way we have a nice point there. Okay? And we're just going to go in and we're going to work on our flowers. So we want these hashtags and these details to dry a little bit. And we're just going to take our brush and we're going to make swirly lines around our flowers. Now sometimes I'm light pressure and then sometimes thicker pressure. So up here I'm light and then thicker to flare out our brush to make some of the lines a little bit thicker. Okay? So again, start up here, light pressure, heavy pressure, and then light pressure. Thin, push, and then pick up. Thin, push, pick up. Okay, then push and pick up, and then I'm just going to put two little ones in there. Okay? And we're going to add little white highlights to each of our leaves. Okay? And then I'm going to rinse that off. Now I'm going to get out some black. And I'm still going to use my liner brush. It's wet. I'm drying it off. I'm using my liner brush. Twirling it in there. Okay. We we'll use our liner brush almost like a pencil. And now. I'm going to outline my Eiffel Tower. And again, these don't lines don't have to be perfect. You want them fairly straight. But if not, that's okay too. I could also be using my three quarter inch brush for this, but I think it's easier for this kind of stuff for you guys to have the liner brush. So I'm using the liner brush. And these lines are by no means perfect. Look how it's all starting to come together already. Isn't that cool? And while we, yeah. all right, I'll use my liner brush. While we have our liner brush out, I'm going to put in the lamp. So I put the two lines up there. This could also be done with your three quarter, um, but I'll do it with my liner brush, okay? And then, like I said, it's a U. With a hat. And then, almost an N on the top. The little tab. And then another little U in the middle. Let's see, do we have any questions? Nope. Okay. 
do my rinse off my liner brush and I'm going to go back to my three quarter because for the hashtags I think it is much easier to use the three quarter. Now when we add our black hashtags we don't want to cover over our purple. I guess we're kind of making them parallel. So again we're doing our X's but we're doing them next to each other and off of each other. See? So. we don't want to cover up our purple and we just want these to be parallel with the first ones that we did. So I keep picking up a little bit of paint and filling in my hashtags. Oh, watching from Maryland. Cute. Okay. And then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add some more black to here. little bit of a black there go over our outline there Ooh. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add lines just by pushing down with my three-quarter inch brush okay I'm going to add in some shading in here and then a little bit of shading in here. Now this is more um, of a whimsical look than we usually do and that's fine but you, you know you have to understand that there's different looks and so shading for this is going to be different than you know shading that would be put on the snowman's face or whatever we do so oh, I'm going to use my liner brush for this I'm just adding in little details I put some dots in the middle there and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to add in little black lines up here okay And using the back of my brush, I did some black dots. I'm going to go in, I'm going to add some teal here for in between. And they're just kind of like blobbies. No rhyme or reason. All right, and then I'm going to pick up the purple with the back of the brush and I'm going to add purple in some dots too. We're just trying to be a little bit creative. We like to add details to our projects. We like them to look a little different than other people's. Okay. And now I just realized I missed a little bit of black in here. Okay. Okay. I'm also going to pick up our teal and I'm going to add some more. I keep saying teal, but it's turquoise or patina. Add in there like that. And now I'm showing you, you can do your lines with the liner brush as well. And see, the teal is just so subtle in there because it's the same color, the teal again. It's the turquoise, it's the same color, but because we made this a little bit washed out with the white, now we can use it as a highlight color. See that? Okay. 
bring that little arch down there. I am even going to go in, I'm gonna add some of this pretty um, turquoise to my flowers to bring in the turquoise from the tower. So again, we waited for this to dry, and now I'm light pressure, then heavy pressure, and then light pressure again. So we start up, we push down, and then we pick up. We start up, we push down, and then we pick up. Okay? That is um, part of the One Stroke Donna Dewberry. One Stroke and Donna Dewberry is all about paint, pressure, and position. And those will be one of the part of the um, what we'll be learning in the One Stroke Beginner Course. I'm going to use the back of the brush and I'm just going to add little centers to my flowers. Okay. I'm going to fill in the bottom part of the lamp. with the dark purple. And then with the dirty brush, I'm gonna pick up some magenta and I'm gonna just fill in the top part of the lamp. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We want it to have some character, okay? Now I'm going to do the little part with the white. And I'm going to add some white highlights to it as well. And I'm also going to add a little bit of white down the side of our light pole. Okay, so let's look. Before we add all the white highlights, I'm going to pick it up again. I'm going to show you guys what we have. So we added um, all the purple and the turquoise highlights. And we added a little bit of magenta to the middle of our flowers and to our lamp. And we added the white and the turquoise to our flowers. Okay, let me show you guys the flowers up close. And they're just a cute, simple, whimsy flower. So if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. I'm going back to my liner brush and with the white we're now going to go in and we're going to highlight everything. So we're going to go in and we're going to add some white lines. Not completely covering our black either to the inside or the outside of the black. And we don't have to do it across the whole thing. We can just do part of it, come down the side, across the bottom. We had some white highlight up in here. Let's see, did we miss anything? I could add a little bit of white to my hashes, my hash marks. But I don't want it to overpower the black and the purple. Because I like how those colors are working in this. I can go in and I can add some white in here. Okay. I can add a little bit of white to my magenta for my flower center. And just see how that just makes the centers pop a little bit by adding a little bit of white with our liner brush. 
and go in here and I can add a little bit of white along our grass, our grassy knoll. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't outline my flowers. I'm gonna outline my flowers. I rinse my brush and pick up some black and I'm outlining my flowers. And see, I'm not even sticking to the shape. I'm just coming in here and adding a wiggle line all around my flower. I'm not worrying about the pink. I'm not worrying about exactly covering my flower and following the purple. I just added a little wiggle border around there. You know what I just realized? Silly, silly, silly. I didn't paint this whole part down here. I left it open. So I'm going to go back in and add some of my teal and my white down here. Did I mess anybody up? I'm going to have to put a disclaimer. in my video. Hmm. Too bad nobody called me out on that. It's okay, you guys can call me out on that. I kept looking and looking and I was like, something doesn't look right. There we go. It's paint. You can fix anything. It's okay to mess up. Everyone messes up. So look at that. Okay. Now I'm going back to my liner brush. That's better. Oh, so silly. Going back to my liner brush. I'm adding in the black. Here. And here. I'm going to fix this with the black. And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to add all the rest. Magenta under here. The full teal. Let's see. The full color teal, not pastelled out. And the purple. And then some white. Okay? And then white in here. Just pulling it down a little bit. There we go. Much better, y'all. And there we have it. So, thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Angie. Um, let's turn it around. Okay, here is our finished. Oh, that looks so much better. You guys, why didn't you tell me? Um, but, okay. As silly as that was of me, look how easy that was to fix. This part down here was already dry. Our pink was dry. I just went back in, it's paint. You can fix anything. I went back in, I mixed up a little bit more of our um, turquoise and white and just filled it in and then put my lines back in. So there you go. So there's some whimsy, whimsy flowers on the bottom, our little lamp post and our Eiffel Tower. So, I ordered any more. It's just, that's right, it's just paint. My head was looking at my basic stuff. Um, yeah, it's just paint. So the two rules I like to follow is if you're trying to blend, you want to do wet on wet. You want your paints to be wet. You want your um, whatever it is on your surface wet, and then you're adding wet paint to it. You want to have a lot of paint in your brush, not too much paint. You don't want it to be globbing all over, but you want, you want to have paint in your bristles like I show you guys. You know, don't be afraid. Put it in, put it in. Turn it over and turn it over. You wanna have a decent amount of paint in your bristles. And you want wet, wet on wet to blend. When you wanna fix something, you have to um, be patient. Yes, 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 you have to be very patient. And if you let whatever it is that you're not happy with dry, you can fix anything. Obviously, it is harder to do light on dark than it is to do dark on light. You know, that goes without saying, but it can be done. So, 
there you have it. Here is our Eiffel Tower. Um, so cute, right? And I like, so I said, you can change up the color palette. You can do this in black and grays. You can do it in blues. You can do it in greens, whatever you want. And it's just, it's just adding some fun details. I love um, projects like this because they're fun, they're vibrant, um, they're fairly quick, and they're versatile. So, and now you can, you know, you can take the flowers and the lamp post and put them, you know, anywhere. So, like I said, all my paint parties from the beginning, I think we started in January with the Happy Snowman, are in the guides. So if you look up top in the guides, I've made guides for every one of them. I will put this in here too. They all include me, um, the tracer, and the supply list. And like I've said before, the supply list is only a suggestion. Feel free to swap out the colors. Feel free to use the paint you have. Feel free to use the brand of paint you like. It's up to you, your art, your way. Um, I will be posting the September freebie soon. And don't forget, I am working on a beginner one stroke course that I would love to have you guys join me for. We will be doing um, the one stroke leaf, the wiggle leaf, and the heart leaf, and three um, flowers. Sunflower, daisy, and the five petal flower. Okay, and for, thank you, Auntie. And there will be a bonus for early sign up. So I will be um, probably putting that together. Look for that sometime next week because um, I'm working on that. The course will come with video tutorials, lives, and um, practice sheets. So I'm working on the practice sheets. So there you have it. So thank you everyone for joining me. Really, you guys, this is a private group. Anybody can see it. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. I blinged my apron. What do you think? Cute, right? With my, some of my enamel pins to paint. Um, this is Artist Club. This company closed. I loved it, but it was cute. And then these are some of my blingy paintbrushes. But anyway, back to where I was. Sorry. Squirrel. Um, I don't remember where I was. Oh, whatever. So look for it this week. Um, I will be posting. We will be having practice sheets. How much is the class? I don't know, Carrie, but you know what? Honestly, it is going to be um, very affordable. It's going to be six lessons with um, practice guides to go with them. And we can go right on. Yes, you will have access to the videos for as long as you have them. You'll be able to download them. Um, oh, I just remembered what I was going to say before. Yes, you will have access to the videos. You will have all the PDFs I show you. So you will have PDFs for practice strokes. And then um, I will show you, you use wax paper over the PDFs to practice your strokes. Wax paper works in two ways. A, you're not messing up your practice sheets. And B, wax paper helps your brush glide so nicely with the paint that um, you'll be very successful with your strokes. So that helps. And then you throw out the wax paper and you put another piece of wax paper down. And wax paper is very inexpensive. So anyway, like I was saying, back to the group. So this group is a public group, but the only people that can be in it and see are members. So please, 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 you guys, don't be shy. Post your paintings for others to see. Post your paintings for me to see. Um, or message me. Message me your painting. I would love to see your paintings. And if you have any questions, I am here to help. Um, if it's something we can message back and forth about, that's great. Um, so I'm your girl. It's going to be ready in the beginning of September. And part of the reason I want to be ready in the beginning of September, I want people to be comfortable if they want to make some Christmas presents or holiday gifts to be able to um, do that. Paint ornaments um, or embellish some things. So we will be open in the beginning of September. So that's about six weeks away, middle of September. Um, and then it's going to last for six classes. I don't know if I'm going to do a class a week or two classes a week. But like I said, you guys will have access to the videos. Um, and then hopefully, you know, in that amount of time with practicing with me, um, we're going to do it in Zoom too, and I will record the Zoom lesson, so we'll be doing it in Zoom, it won't be in Facebook Live, so we will be able to interact and I'll be able to, um, see what you guys are doing and, you know, we'll have more, you know, hold your brush like this or whatever. So yeah, it'll be in Zoom so we can, I'm a few steps behind, but we remind, oh great Terry, thank you. Um, I'd love to see it. Share with us. So yes, look forward to that. Um, there will be bonuses for early signups. 
and I will have more of the details to come. So, love you guys. Keep painting, and I will keep sharing art from my heart. Have a great night, everyone.